What is up guys, this is me, Johnny Cooper 64 here with another YouTube video, and welcome to my part 5 of my Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy Let's Plays of Crash Bandicoot 1. We're going to be starting with The High Road. It's high noon. High noon in the Wumpa Islands. Except we're not in the Wumpa Islands, we're in Cra Cortex's Island. Which is later bought by Papu Papu. As in an agreement. So now, in, you know, in the background level... Oh, let me see. Okay, there you go. Oh, gosh darn it. You know, with these little, um, blue slidey type of thing, you know, you're supposed to getting, you're supposed to be getting, like, some sort of speed in order to kind of, like, uh, you know, reach the other platform. Sadly, you know, it's kind of like a yes or no, um, or like a 50-50 if you make it or not, you know, depending on how much, you know, uh, you press on the D-pad. Uh, and as I said before, you know, you can kind of like cheat on this part, you know, when you reach the little rope. Uh, let's see. Oops, I died. Alright, let me go to these little platforms. Okay. But yeah, as I said before, you see the Cortex Castle in the background, and it's the exact same size as the, you know, the level in the high road, you know, the level road to nowhere. Now, um, oh gosh. Now, this shall not be possible, you know, since the player is, you know, already on the third island, but, you know, Insane Trilogy actually fixed this by actually making... You know, as you continue off the game, you know, the castle, the castle, the castle, Frank Castle, you know, the castle actually grows bigger as, you know, continue off the level. You know, that's actually pretty nice detail they added. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, Cage Visions, you know, fixed this, you know, because as I said before, you know, uh, they could have just, you know, remastered the game and, you know, not add anything new or detailed or, you know, add, add basically new content and stuff like that. But, you know, because Visions, you know, they fixed the little errors that, you know, uh, the original trilogy had, you know, added new things, and, you know, made it really good. And, you know, these Ninja Turtles, oh gosh, you know, these Ninja Turtles are such a pain in the asshole. Let me see if I can fight them off, alright. Let me go. Let's see, okay. And, yeah, oh gosh, you know, this doesn't really kind of work when you kind of try to jump into, like, another rope. You know, it does work though if you are in the same rope, but in this case you have to kind of like jump in this middle toad slash ninja turtle. Ooh, I just killed off Leonardo. Alright, let me see if I can get, if I can make it to that checkpoint. Okay. There you go. Now just press the D-pad. Kind of make the turtle kind of uh, get a bit closer to you, then you make it. And, um, in the original trilogy, you know, uh, I missed it again. You kind of have to have, like, the turtle go a bit in the edge in order to kind of, like, um, uh, make the jump, if you know what I mean. You know, get it from there, jump, oh my flipping god. I really do hate this level, though. Super difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Now, I, you jump in this. Ooh. Okay, there you go. Ooh. Now, um, what, you know, what I hate about this is actually that the turtles don't respawn and I just flip and fell. And, you know, when the turtles don't spawn, you know, you either kill yourself, um, or you, uh, go into, like, these little ropes and I got killed again. Oh, gosh. All right. Let's see if I can make it this time. You can kind of see a little, um, you know, the sun going down or up. I'm not sure what, but, you know, you can kind of see, like, the little reddish type of thing, which means that it's, uh, either the sun is going up or it's going down. Okay, come on, come on. Make it die. Wait, okay, there you go. I cheated that part and I got a checkpoint. Got that little ton of token. Ooh, let me make it through the other part. There you go. Ooh, got killed by... What the hell happened to the werehog? You saw that? You saw how, like, it froze or some... Like, it kind of glitched out or something. What the hell was that for? Oh, no flipping hell, titties. 
All right, let's go back. I that's that's a, th that's a weird thing about the Warhawks and the you know the Crash Van Crew one, you know when you you get killed or you know at least they get killed by Pop Aquaku, you know they make some sort of like weird uh, death screen or death animation like they freeze and then like instead of like um I guess. Uh, dying like other enemies do you know where either spin it and you know it flies away like this time you know they like freeze for like a couple of seconds or like one second and then it just like disappears like um no real uh, death animation i guess for them and hopefully they fix this for like the mc trilogy uh you know when they're porting it to the switch and you know for the and the pc you know they can kind of like you know fix this also for the uh, ps4 also what the hell look physics man physics the turtle is just floating without a little blink uh, helping him put his weight on it and now you can kind of see like the little cortex castle uh, being more closer than you know the high road uh, being uh, or like the road to nowhere you know and of course I'm getting killed Also, you know, the levels actually cut in half in the Japanese version. And I don't know why. I guess they try to make it a bit more easier and stuff like that. Oh, loading the Wump Islands. God damn it, I hate them loading times. They could have made it like five seconds or something. Now we're in the one of the most difficult games in the Crash 1. Um, of course, Stormy Ascent beat it by a lot. All right, let's go. Now, um, the music in this uh, level is kind of ruined in a way. Um, you know, the way they actually make it, it's less terrifying. Makes it, um, yeah, it makes it really less terrifying, and it changes the tone of the, you know, what the original game had intended to. Now, that's. Uh, that's something that should be noted for. Also, what I love about, you know, the Stormy Ascent levels, or like the raining levels, I guess. But, you know, this is the first game, or first level to uh, introduce this, is the little uh, water falling down from the screen. Now, there's like some layers when coming to this. There is the layers, um, the first layer is, of course, the water dripping into the uh, screen. And then there's like the water falling down as crash proceeds and of oh my flipping what the flipping hell i have to start all the uber again sad thing is that you know if you want to get a, a freaking gem you cannot die at all that is that, that that's actually um actually makes it way more difficult uh, for this level and you know you you just like die one time you, d you, you just can't make it, buddy. You have to start all over again. Uh, well, for the exception of the little bonus rounds, for like the Tana one or the Embryo, except uh, Tana's bonus round is actually absent in this game. Or not absent in this game, but absent in this particular level. Then there's these like old men also trying to, you know, kind of chase you. Um, uh, of course, these little birds, you know. Me making kind of flying away in a way. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Kind of strange in a way, also. Uh, Alright, let's go through these platforms. Oh, these creepy old men, dude. Uh, what the hell are they gonna try to do to you when once they kind of like grab your leg and, you know, uh, like what, 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 is, what is their intention on grabbing you? Like these guys are like creepy old ass men. Alright, let's go to these little stairs. Ooh, really difficult really difficult okay you know you kind of uh, you kind of have to know when you're going to be reaching um, you know a certain path or a certain part of the, the platform you know what I just did uh, I didn't make it in time you know you kind of have to know when it's gonna be coming up or when it's gonna be coming down in the prototype there's actually more uh, platforms and uh you know the level is actually way more harder in the uh, original which um you know they were gonna make it more longer but i think you know since stormy ascent was cut off you know they decided to also remove 
the uh, the levels or like the more platforms and um, when, the, when, the, when they mean about platforms I think they mean about you know these things I'm stepping on you know there's gonna be more and it was gonna be like way harder and um, of course it was gonna be longer as well so um you know with the stormy ascend cutoff thing I think that's why they uh, removed this and you know made it easy but still you know pretty much hard and you know as I said you know with the music you know they could have added a uh, Josh uh, Mansell, you know, to return and make, you know, the music again, but I guess, you know, Vicarious Visions or Activision, you know, whoever had to make the decision on making the music, you know, they wanted to make it, I guess, cheap, and, you know, they just uh, used someone from the studio or something, you know, to make the music instead of hiring uh, Josh Mansell, but I don't think, um, I think it will have been, uh, like, he will have accepted, you know, the offer, like, whatever money he wanted. I guess, or, um, you know, I, I don't think he really wants, uh, much money, I guess you can say, because, you know, um, I think he will love to, uh, do music again, you know, for, like, uh, the Crash Trilogy, you know, Remaster, Spyro Trilogy, and also, I think also, like, future games, you know, Call of added him, but I guess it's a missed opportunity, and, you know, they decided to make, uh, the music cheap, um, oh, wait, wait, let's see, okay, there you go. Wait, 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 I actually see this, it's okay, look, you see that reddish part? I never actually noticed that while playing the game. Uh, you know, I always thought, you know, the, um, the whole stormy part, it was actually, like, really dark, you know? I guess that that's only for, like, stormy ascent, and I just flip and fell. Alright. Also, this is, like, the first level, and also, like, the whole, uh, series to include the lab assistants, you know? That's a nice fact to know. Um, alright, let's jump here. So, yeah, this game is uh, known as uh, Sonic's Ass Game, you know? Or, like, back when it was um first production, and uh, I think they called it Sonic's Ass Game because, you know, Aquaku, you know, kept staring at Crash Bandicoot, and I guess... Oh, no, 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 let me, let me go jump back and let me uh, go back and... Alright, there you go. Because, you know, you need to give it kind of a, a little time for the platform to uh, arrive at your area instead of, you know, jumping and, uh, you know, dying and not landing on the platform. But as I was saying, um, they compared Crash Bandicoot to Sonic, you know, I guess, because, you know, they were both animals, and uh, back then, there weren't really much, like, animal platformers, I guess. I mean, there was a Ty, Ty the Tasmanian, but I think that was, like, later on. So, you know, they they were joking on how, like, it's Sonic, and, you know, it's an ass, Sonic's ass game. And I forgot to collect the other embryo uh, token. Alright, let's see, let's land, oh, flip and doodle. Oh my god, I have to start all over again from this part. Holy mother of flippin' tits. Alright, let's see if I can go back. Okay, let's see. Oof, okay. Alright, alright, let's go here. But yeah, that is actually pretty nice uh, detail they added over here. I'm not sure if, they, if it had, it was, if it was in the original. I don't, I don't think it was in the original. I think in the original it was like dark. Um, uh. But, you know, I never actually noticed that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually currently surprised right now. You know, the the small details, you know, you you kind of, like, uh, encounter once you start playing the game again. Especially since, you know, it's remastered, you know. Uh, you, you, you notice details there and there as you're playing the game. Alright. On this platform, let's go over here. Um. Alright. Okay. Ooh, that spike, dude. That's, that's gotta hurt if you accidentally land on, uh, land on it with your head. Alright, let's go to these little birds that automatically spawn. Let's get an Aku Aku, you know, in case any of those labs, you know, try to, you know, throw a little, um, scientific splash in my head. Alright, let's go to these birds again. Okay, I landed right there. Imagine people who try to get the gym for this level. Now, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. Okay. Let's get these... Uh, Okay. And there you go. 42, 42, yeah, 42 lives. Uh, didn't get the boxes, but I completed it. Great, but you missed 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28
loading you know they really do need to kind of fix the loading i guess um you know i, I heard you know they're making a ps5 uh, console you know soon so you know this is a pretty much a good time to kind of like fix the loading times only have it like for like two seconds or not even have them at all um you know the ps5 is going to be this strong all right lights out now the level's name is based off you know of like an uh Mothers saying, you know, telling their children to, you know, go to bed, you know, to pass their bedtime or something. And, you know, they're going to turn off the lights or something like that. Now, while I was playing this level, you know, uh, or at least before I played this level, I watched the movie uh, back, last year, back last year ago during January. Or was it last year? I forgot. I think it was like in 2016. Um, there was this movie called Lights Out, where I watched it with my boy Epic88. Um... Basically, in the movie Lights Out, there's like this monster that uh, you basically have to turn on the lights in order to for her to kind of like fade away, you know, not for, in order to not to attack you. And you know, the lights are off, and you know, there's like no lights, and it's complete darkness. Then you know, there's like a monster, like the monster shows up and uh, you know tries to kill you, and you know, do these horrific stuff. You know, like right now, you know, the lights are off. It's, you know, besides that. Um, so, you know, now that I'm playing this level, or, you know, back then, I wish, um, I guess, you know, in a future Crash game, since, you know, they can't do that, you know, I hope, like, they kind of bring back this kind of, um, you know, type of theme of the level, you know, with Aquaku glowing, and, um, you have, like, a monster this time, you know, kind of chase you, you know, the lights are on or off, you know, um, I know it kind of steals a bit of the idea, but, like, you know, Crash, you know, took the idea from, like, the, uh, the boulder from, um, uh, Indiana Jones, so, you know, I, I don't see why they can't use that, especially since, you know, there's, like, a lot of level names, you know, parodies, like, Rolling Stones, you know, the magazine Rolling Stones, or the band Rolling Stones, um, a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, that Crash, you know, takes from, um, I guess, companies, but, you know, it's fine, you know, Crash does it really good, in a fair way, uh, but I don't see why they, you know, the Wait, wait, okay, there you go. But I, I, I would love to see, you know, something like that. Okay, come on. Alright. Now, this is, a uh, It's a short level. I'm not gonna lie. This is a pretty short level. But it is not an easy level, though. Not an easy level. I will say that. Great. But you missed two, three boxes. Alright, you know. Let's get the hell out of here. Crash is finally out of the thingy wait so i see like a lot of cortex um carpets in there so i guess i'm in cortex's castle already or something yeah i think i am yeah i'm part of cortex's castle then i'm going to jaws of darkness so yeah i'm basically in cortex's island right now i just i guess i um just arrived there and you know i'm just kind of like entering through like the castle and now i'm in jaws of darkness which is kind of completely different um all right let's go now um this is one of these those like only levels that are completely dark in a way you know there's still light but completely dark um and also like one of those uh levels that are, are only like in the temples and you know in a new crash game i would love to see um you know temples you know, kind of come back in a way you know we of course we do have like temple ruins um i think it's in crash 2 or something I forgot sorry I think I think this is like the, the prequel to this one I mean this was this one's called Jaws of Darkness I think the other one is actually Temple Ruins I forgot but there's this level I think in Crash 2 um, kind of named Temple Ruins and it's basically I think the leftovers from this level after like you know um, the whole cortex building went off fire so I guess all of this kind of like turned to crap and you know we kind of see this in you know in Crash 2 and holy moly guacamole, I have to start all over again. Also, those snakes uh, remind me of like that show called Lego Ninjago. Watched it when I was a kid. An absolutely um, uh, amazing TV show, I will say. The the snake reminds me of, um, what was that villain's name from Ninjago? Let me, let me look at him. Looks like um Viper. Oh, wait, not Viper. Um, I mean, he's like a cobra, but... Pythor, Pythor, it's that guy's name. Uh, yeah. 
basically, you know, the Ninjago, great, amazing TV show, dude, amazing TV show for, like, you know, a kid story, especially with a low budget in Cartoon Network, did not expect, like, a huge story, um, or at least a deep story for a kid's uh, show. Sadly, the, you know, the movie doesn't really go that route, um, and, you know, when movies based off things from, like, um, TV shows or comics or movies, you know, they always have to give it a comic relief, or not a comic relief, but, like, add tons of comedy that there's really no um, deep story, you know, how, like, the TV shows do it. You know, that's what saddens me about uh, today's uh, movies. Ooh, there you go. Ooh, got that Cortex emblem, or token, or whatever it's called. Let's go here. Got that icon, slash token, or whatever you call it. I mostly call it icon. Oh, my flipping dude. At least I get a checkpoint. Also, it's really weird how they made the tarantulas. Um, this this time is like kind of greenish, and you know the little red thunder. Or well, it's not thunder. This one is just like the red ass that he has. <laughs> In the original, I think it's like a black widow that's there. Um, and instead of like the reddish, like the whole bud being red, I think it was like um a little thunder. You know, the thunder, the lightning, and the thunder. Alright, let's see. Oh, this is one of those... Ah, oh gosh. This is one of those 50-50 moments. You know, you either uh, land on the platform, or you actually don't land on the platform and you die. And that's what I hate about these little platforms. Now, let's see if I can... Um... Okay, there you go. I landed on the platform. Alright, let's see if those spikes can go away. Jump in this little black widow. Or, what well, used to be a black widow. Ah, doodle sticks. Do love that death animation where like crash kind of gets splattered. Um, but anyways, I today I'm gonna be talking about to you guys that how I got Crash Bandicoot one. Yeah, I'm basically gonna be doing this for like I guess each Crash game I get. You know, I'm gonna be telling you like a little story on how I got each game, and I I don't know why, but I keep on dying. Okay, let me focus now. Um, anyways, how did I get Crash Bandicoot one? So, I got Crash Bandicoot 1 when me and my family, you know, we were going to a store called Entertain Mart. And basically, in Entertain Mart, they sell, like, a lot of video games, uh, retro video games, new video games, or, like, um, I guess video games that are not that old, but not new, um, you know, type of games. And, you know, I really love that store, because, you know, had all the video games, PS1 games, I mean, rarely PS1 games, that's the thing. Then there was like PS2 games, like lots of them, uh, lots of PS3 games, uh, not PS4 because, you know, back then they didn't have the PS4, but, um, you know, or then, you know, well, the PS4 didn't exist, basically. And for Crash Bandicoot, you know, I went to those like little envelopes, you know, those, you know, games that don't have cases, so, you know, when I was looking through the envelopes, I saw Crash Bandicoot. Now, you know, for, for a moment I was like, I was like, wait, what? You know, because I knew there was like a Crash Bandicoot, you know, game where it was just like Crash Bandicoot, like no uh, two or three. So I was actually really hyped. I was like, holy moly, I need to get this. But the thing is, the reason why I went to Entertain Mart is in order to get Super Mario 64 for the Nintendo DS. Now, I already had the Nintendo DS game for like Super Mario 64. I don't know why I sold it again. But it keeps selling games and then I keep rebuying them. That's just how my brain worked back when I was a kid. But now I usually just conserve games and, you know, I don't sell them because, you know, I'm going to be playing them later on when I'm uh, older or, you know, have nothing to do. So, you know. Um, so then, you know, I show my dad, you know, hey, I want Crash Bandicoot 1. I think it was like $20. $20. Um, then my dad was like, okay, you either buy this or you buy the Super Mario game, or you, we go to the movies and watch the, um, what was that movie called, um, I forgot what it was, it was something about, it was like a Disney movie, and it was super scary, I mean, you know, for me as a kid, um, it had like Scrooge, 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 I think it was like, um, uh, not, it was not Night Before Christmas, of course. That's, like, way beyond my age. It was, um... 
I forgot, I forgot. But it was like, you know, I, th I think you kind of know what I'm saying. It's like an old man, you know, that was, that's so greedy with money and basically there's like ghosts that haunts him and, you know, stuff like that. But anyways, you know, I say Crash Bandicoot because, you know, I am a huge Crash Bandicoot fan. I'm not going to lie. Plus, you know, I already played the DS game, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get Crash Bandicoot 1. So, you know, I, bought, I buy it. You know, I put it on. You know, me first playing it. I see how the controls are really different from Crash 2. Now, I got Crash Bandicoot 1 after I got Crash Bandicoot 2 and then Crash Bandicoot 3. So, you know, it's like my last... Oh, basically, um, I got Crash Bandicoot Warp first, then, you know, uh, Cortex Strikes Back second, and then I got uh, Crash Bandicoot 1 last. It's basically um, backwards, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So basically, when I was playing it, it was really different because, you know, you can dash in the game. You can, like, um, double jump uh, or do, like, you know, any of those stuff that you do in Crash 2 and 3. And, you know, I was really surprised. And, you know, the, of course, the game was super hard as well. Super hard. I noticed how there was, like, no save file. You know, you had to, like, um, you know, go to the Tana's. And, you know, that's what I love about, the, you know, Crash 1, I guess, back then. Is that, or kind of hated it, actually. And, you know, how things actually changed in the Insane Trilogy is the password, you know, of course, they had to change the password type of thing, because, you know, now we have, like, an autosave, or, you know, you can just save it by yourself, instead of, um, you know, having to, you know, get a Tana, having to beat the Tana bonus round, and, you know, you earning the little, um, the save game type of thing, and, you know, that's what really made, for me, Crash Bandicoot 1 super hard. But, of course, Instinct Trilogy fixed that, and, you know, that's one of those main, you know, changes in Crash Bandicoot 1. And also, the, um, what was the other one? I know there was, like, a password change, but there was something else. Ooh. In this one, in these little platforms, you have to be really quick in order to avoid lavas. Really quickly. Okay, let's go here. Hit these little twin sanity type of robots. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, let's go. So yeah, Crash One, fantastic game though. You know, as a kid. And I, for me, Crash Bandicoot One is actually like a th my theme, uh, my Christmas, uh, or at least like winter type of game. And it's supposed to be Crash Bandicoot 2, because, you know, Crash Bandicoot 2 is based off, like, snow and stuff like that. But, for some odd reason, uh, it, would, it never was my snow type of game when, you know, winter came. It was actually Crash Bandicoot 1. And the I think the main reason is because, um, you know, when I got the game, you know, it was during, you know, I think that type of, uh, type of year, I think, or type of month, you know, when it was snowing. The schools were cancelled, you know, I had no school, and I get to, you know, stay home and play Crash Bandicoot 1. And the level, my favorite level in order to play, you know, when winter came is actually uh, this level I'm in, Castle Machinery, and the prequel to this level. Um, no, well, not the level we just played before, but I mean like the, like the same themed level, but it's like a prequel to this one. But I, you know, do absolutely love this part. Love the little kind of futuristic type of look. Not really futuristic, but you know, you know the little boiler room type of thing that you know, kind of comes back into insanity. And Twin Sanity, fantastic game. Twin Sanity is an absolute fantastic game. Ooh. And also, um, out of all the levels, this is actually the level that has like tons of you know lives. You know. You know, when if you got like the gem, you can get all the lives you want. Absolutely amazing. And this actually, this level actually replaced Stormy Ascent in the final cut of the original game, because you know Stormy Ascent is super hard, and so you know they had to cut it, cut it loose. But yeah, so a lot of people actually kind of hate, or not really hate, but like um they wanted. The Crash Bandicoot 2 and Crash Bandicoot 3 controls into Crash Bandicoot 1, and I have to highly disagree with that. Crash Bandicoot 1 is, you know, really different from 2 and 3, you know, due to, you know, no dash or new, like, no, 
um, ducking, I think. Yeah, you can duck in this game. Um, and that's what makes Crash different from Crash 2 and 3, you know? Controls are different, and, you know, if you have the 2 and 3 controls, then um, the game will have changed a lot, you know? The, it will make the game way more easier, and, you know, don't really, we, we don't really want that. Now, I do love the little, you know, green globs, or, you know, little Ghostbusters type of thing that looks like Slimer. You know, uh, in the original, it was just like green slime and stuff like that that kept them moving. For me, it didn't really make sense, I guess. But, you know, now they made it into like this type of monstrosity slash Slimer from Ghostbusters type of thing. And, you know, I really like that. I really like how they, you know, kind of add cr characters, or, you know, at least into those you know, green slimes. And the small details they do. Alright, come on. Ooh. Ah, damn it. You know, in the original, you can actually hit them if you spin them, but in here, you actually have to jump on them. And uh, Also, actually, a main difference, you know, that actually changes kind of like the whole, you know, type of thing in this boss battle is how, like, in the original, when you hit the green glob, it somehow hurts Embryo, and I, I didn't really get that when I was a kid. But in, in this one, it, it really fixes it, because... You know, when you hit the green globs, it's, you know, it spills slime or green slime or whatever the hell that is into Embryo's uh, face. Ugly Frankenstein looking face. Love the little gargoyles from the background, you know. Embryo shall appear in medieval you know, with a little skull. My flipping a god. Okay, let's do this. Also, I, I think, isn't that like the Thumpa Wumpa Islands in the background from Embryo? Come on. Okay, there you go. Come on, come on, Embryo. You can't attack the Crash Pro. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Also, Embryo actually, um... Uh, is like the first time I see, like, you know, those scientific tubes. You know, that's a pretty cool fact. Oh, come on, come on. And, uh... I'm not sure... If I, yeah, I actually got this game before I got, you know, the Titans movies. Not Titans movies, but like the Titans game came out. And I keep dying. Holy flipping hell. This, okay, come on. Let me concentrate this time. Um, oh, yeah, talking about Titans, I'm not even, a lot of people kind of hate the games. And, you know, I do kind of see why, you know, they will hate the game in a way, um, you know, due to its dramatic change from to insanity, a fantastic game that should have, um, you know, kept going with the same type of style or type of theme. You know, uh, not open world. I mean, open world in a way, but not like really open world. That kind of like Spyro. You know, they should have kept that. But you know, they went to a different route. You know, kind of like a little soft reboot in a way, with Titans. You know, with the redesign, and you know, um, kind of taking away the purpose of Crash is spinning. You know, this time Crash fights with these fists. Um. I think it does change Crash's future in a way, you know, if Crash does get featured in Super Smash Bros. Um, you know, he will do like the spin, but he'll also kind of do like a little little fist fight, you know, that he did in Minor Mutant and in Titans. So you know, that's pretty cool. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, 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 ooh. Co oh, hell yeah, alright. Embryo is gonna use that last extra health that he has in order to kill me he's gonna turn into hulk my dudes hulk come on and i think in order to avoid copyright they just like look look let's see it shows question mark exclamation mark and uh, question mark like they didn't basically they don't know what the hell this is and you know they can't use hulk and i guess this is based off the of hulk come on come on come on embryo Ooh. Come on, you wish you can be me, Embryo. I wish I wish Embryo returns in future games, though. This is, like, the only game we, we like, really battle him. And he falls down. That's a, that's a pretty funny cutscene. Like, you know, he's trying to fly like a bird. You know, my mother was actually um, right next to me when I was playing this boss battle. And she actually laughed at little cutscenes. Saying, oh, bravo to you, Vicarious Visions, for making my parents laugh. Uh, it, it was a pretty fun, funny cutscene when I first saw this as well. Bravo to you, Vicarious Visions. You know, adding details, you know, that I, I don't think lots of developers will do. Um, you know, I think they will just remaster the game and stuff like that. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching my part 5 of my Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Let's play on Crash Bandicoot 1. 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.